Hey, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. This is ridiculous. Uh, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. Today, I'm going to be talking with other YouTube reviewers and see what they think is the best home theater system for most people. Before we get into it, here's a message from our show sponsor, the Hi-Fi Summit. Have you ever wanted to attend the Hi-Fi trade show, but couldn't? Now you can. On June 26th to 30th, the Hi-Fi Summit begins. It's going to be a five-day event available to people worldwide. There you can see your favorite brands, and you'll get to see all the new products before anybody else. If you're shopping for products, you can even narrow down your search based on price and other specific criteria. You'll be able to chat live with other audio enthusiasts, ask questions about products, and get them answered directly by the companies. You'll be able to vote for best in show. You can even leave testimonials for your favorite brands. Tickets are $49 for all five days, but if you sign up in May, you'll be able to get them at $24 for all five days. Those with tickets will be able to see show specials, exclusive discounts, as well as entering contest giveaways for some ridiculously awesome prizes, like entire systems. And shout out to OSD, one of our gold sponsors. They have their Travoce 12, 800 watt, 12 inch powered subwoofer with passive radiators. They're giving away three of those. The Nero 2 base 10 inch powered subwoofer, they have three of those to give away. The Nero Dual X8, they have three of those. Nero Studio 5 bookshelf speakers, they got five of those, five of those those and the neural link wi-fi stream module 10 of those make sure to check out osd osd black these guys are making their way into the home theater market and i think they're doing an awesome job i'm excited to see what they have to offer but no trade shows complete without an after party so we're gonna have techno dad spinning every single night so you'll be able to sit back at home bump it on your system go to the hi-fi summit.com buy your ticket and let your hi-fi journey to the top begin so first off shout out to my fellow colleagues youtube reviewers Thank you guys for doing this for me and for us here at Daily Hi-Fi. Shout out to you guys. So the reason I wanted to do this is because of the whole thing with AMC and Universal. And my thought is that, you know, AMC was actually my first job. But I think that the movie theaters after this whole thing, I think they're going to be on the decline. And I think direct to us consumers is going to be the way to go streaming. And so if that's the case, then we all need to have some awesome home theaters. So here are some recommendations from other reviewers. So let's start off with Chris, aka that home theater dude. He sent me a video and it's titled Another One for These Hoes. <laughs> All right, hey guys, what's going on? It's that home theater dude. And what do I think is the best home theater system? No surprise there, guys. You guys know I love me some SVS. And I started my channel with an inexpensive clip system, sold it, got a more expensive clip system, and then I sold all that stuff, and I slowly started upgrading to all this Ultra lineup behind me. Main reason why I did it is because of this guy right back here. This is their Ultra Center, and the incredible dynamics, the detail and clarity that come out of it are just incredible. I've just been so impressed since then, and I slowly started upgrading from, from there. And SVS is a great brand. They have amazing customer service and then their, their products are just incredible because you're always gonna get more performance than what you're gonna pay for. So there's inherent value in that. So now I'm probably talking to a very specific demographic here. So let's go ahead and dispel some myths. You're probably middle-aged, you probably have a wife and kids and you probably have some disposable income. The home theater community, the home theater hobby is not cheap whatsoever. So let's go ahead and dispel that myth. So let's talk about the old good, fast and cheap triangle, right? So now you can go ahead and get rid of fast and then put in wife approved. So things can be wife approved and cheap, but it may not be any good. So there's there's a give and take. There's, there's specific things that you have to pay attention to and picking out your system. Okay, so what I'm talking about is never skimp on your left, center, and right channel, right? And never skimp on your subwoofers. If you get a great set of subwoofers, you buy once, you cry once, and then it's gonna raise up your whole level of performance in your entire system. Your dynamics are just gonna be bumped up and you're just gonna get so much performance out of it. And seeing's believing. If you guys don't believe me, guys, go ahead and test them out. Highly recommend uh, trying these in your house and then you, hopefully you guys will be a believer as well. Okay, so now I have a full on 17 channel SVS Atmos type system going on here. And it's powered by the Emotiva RMC1 in the back with the various amount of amplifiers. And then also have the Epson 6050. And then this is our Black Diamond um, from SI Screens projection screen back here. So like I'm talking about, none of this stuff's cheap, but if you guys wanna see this full 17 channel system in action, go ahead and follow my channel, That Home Theater Dude over on YouTube. I'm gonna go ahead, I bought a bunch of super sophisticated fancy equipment, and then I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can translate that, the sound level performance that I get here into a video. May or may not happen, but it'll, I think it'll be entertaining nonetheless. 
Okay, so big shout out to Techno Dad and Joe and Tell for including me in this video. Really appreciate the support. And if you guys want links to any of this stuff, we'll go ahead and leave it down in the description. You guys can pick up the phone, shoot me an email. We'll go ahead and talk about anything you guys want that's home theater related. But besides that, make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Awesome recommendations, buddy. I know you love SVS, and uh, the theater's looking good, the lighting's looking good, the beer's looking good. Awesome job. All right, who do we have next? We have the one and only Z Reviews, Zeos. He does it in his own style. Let's see what he has to say. Morning, my name is Zeos Pantera from Z Reviews and Hi-Fi Guides, and I'm here to give you the very, very short two minute rundown of what I think you should do to set up a proper cheap home theater. You need a surround receiver, either a 7.1 or a 5.1. 7.1 or 5.1 is determined by your room. If you have this much space behind your couch, you can go with back channels and side channels, and then you can use a 7.1. If not, if this couch is against the wall, you only need a 5.1. Solved, you only should buy either a Denon, a Marantz, or a Yamaha. Those are the three brands I trust. Boom, 30 seconds down. Now, once you have a surround receiver, you need at least two speakers, at least two. You could start with just two. You'd be very happy for the rest of your life with just two speakers. But then once you have two speakers, you set your surround sound receiver to not have a center, a sub, or rears. And you could use it just fine. Now you have to determine what are you getting? Because if you get a center channel, that's where all your money needs to be spent. Center channel is the most important speaker. Not the subwoofer, not the rears, center channel. If you're gonna spend on one, spend on one. But you could just not spend on one like I have because I have very good left and rights. Now, when you get a subwoofer, that's determined by the size of your room, not by your budget. If your bu budget is really small and your subwoofer is really small and you've got a giant open space, nine foot ceiling room, it's not going to be worth it. Wait, save up, buy a real subwoofer. As far as rear channels go, these are $60 a pair rear channels. They don't need to match. They don't have to look the same. They don't even have to be the same brand, color, nothing. Just get channels in the rear because if you don't have rear channels, you don't have a surround sound. That's why it's called a surround sound. It has to surround you. So for what have we learned? Buy a good receiver from you trust, buy the, spend the least amount of money you have to on it. Get just the amount of channels you need, get just the amount of inputs you need. Expensive receivers will be a waste because in five years, they're all gonna be sold on eBay. You need to keep a good one, you're not gonna get it. Get as good a speaker as you can for the front. If you have to get a sub, get an even better center, add the sub for your room and rear channels, they gotta be cheap and then sit down and enjoy movies. Boom, hit it in two minutes. I'll see you guys on the internet or on my couch or with my cat. Where is she? <laughs> Man, so that was about the fastest Zeos review I've ever seen. And um, I would have to say, you know, this guy is amazing at his ability to hype people up. Awesome channel. Uh, he's one of the reasons I started my YouTube channel. But yeah, he can hype you up with just his, his voice in his hands. So... Shout out to Zeos. So next up we have Cody, AKA the home theater hobbyist. Let's see what he has to say. What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. To answer the question, which system I most recommend to, especially new people in the home theater uh, community, I would say this one right here, the Vizio 5.1.2 surround sound system. Now I like this system because it includes Dolby Atmos and DTSX virtual decoding. So you get your three dimensional audio formats. But I also like it because it sounds good, it's easy to set up, it's easy to use, and it costs under $500. So you're not breaking the bank, just getting you a nice setup in your home. Now it does have three speakers along the front of this, these two side surrounds, that's the five part. This is the subwoofer, that's the dot one. And it also has two speakers on the top of this sound bar that reflect off the ceiling and onto your couch to give you the illusion of sounds overhead like rain or helicopters or something like that and those speakers are the dot two part of the nomenclature it also includes bluetooth pairing so you can play music from your phone but like i said it's easy to use and it is easy to set up vizio includes this large box of accessories which has basically every cable you could need including rca optical and an hdmi cable so you can set it up very very easily and i like that because it's in the box so if you want to find out more about this, visit the Home Theater Hobbyist channel. If you want to purchase this, use that link in the description below. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you next time. All right. So Cody went soundbar route, and I've actually tested a similar Vizio, and I think it's using the same sub. That sub was like unbelievably, uh, you know, it was shaking the room a little bit, and I was surprised. But yeah, awesome job on the B-roll. Thank you for the recommendation. Voices sound nice and smooth. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next up we have K-Pace guy. Let's see what he has to say. 
Yo, K Face Guy here. What's going on, YouTube? This is my recommendation for a killer home theater. So, I want to recommend some KEF. We're going to start with the KEF R7s. They're a mid sized floor to end speaker. Absolutely versatile. It's super musical. It's forward. It's right there in your face. Sounds absolutely exceptional. Really good bass. And it's also good for movies as well. Very versatile speaker, can do it all. Now you're gonna wanna pair that with the center channel, the R2C. Pretty good size center channel. It's gonna give you a really good vocal reproduction since it's using that UniQ driver. It's gonna give you a good bass response too for those heftier scenes or maybe a monster. And you will never be displeased with that center channel. Now to round it all off, if you're gonna run a 5.1 channel system, I recommend getting the R3s, their bookshelves. They're absolutely stellar. They sound amazing. They're surprisingly good at bass. So you can use those as your two channel setup if you want to. You can put them in the back as surrounds, as side surrounds. They're gonna sound great. If you're gonna be using a 7.1 channel system, I also recommend getting four R3s just to round out that whole sound in the back of the room. And again, you're getting a really good cohesive sound with all seven speakers. Now, if you're somebody who likes to match all your speaker brands together, I recommend getting the Q50As as your Atmos speakers. You put four of those on your ceiling or on top of your speakers, and you're going to have yourself one heck of a presentation. Not too expensive, comes in black, white, and other colors as well, and will look really, really good. They're not a really big speaker because you can kind of hide them away, and they won't annoy your wife too much. Now, you're going to want to get a good subwoofer to pick up where your speakers are going to leave off. So if a system like this, I'm gonna recommend the SVS PB4000. Cause personally, that's what I have and I've been in love with them ever since I got them. They're gonna give you great authority down low. They're gonna give you a pretty flat response in most rooms and they give you a really nice app to EQ them to really tailor them to your room and to your liking. So that's gonna be my recommendation for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. k -Best Guy out. Peace. All right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, hey, good job. I've been following you since you had your uh, Fluence Signature Series. So it looks like you've upgraded. Kef, and going beast mode. All right, so next up we have Home Theater Gurus. This guy is an awesome teacher. Check out his channel if you want to learn how to tweak your system. Hey, guys, it's Steven here from Home Theater Gurus. So I'm just sitting here on my mower thinking about home theater, you know, contemplating budget systems. So what's a great budget system in my mind? If you're a subscriber to my channel, you know that we try to squeeze as much performance as we can out of our systems. We paid a lot for this stuff and we want to get everything we can out of it. We learn tricks of the pros to get everything set up properly, get it placed properly, get the subs aligned properly. I mean everything from Room EQ Wizard to building subwoofers, which we've done recently, and painting subwoofers. I mean we do everything. You know, anything you can think of, we're going to cover. But as far as budget speakers go, you know, we need a good on and off axis response. We know that, or at least the subscribers or my subscribers know that. So one speaker that comes to mind is the JBL3 series. And the reason it's, it comes to mind is because it has such stellar on and off axis response. It is so good. I mean, speaker, other speaker designers, this is their, their goal. They want speakers that look this good on paper because they're going to sound awesome. And you could say, yeah. Well, you know, it's really about the sound, not what it looks like on paper, but these speakers have gone against some really heavy hitters in blind test and come out on top, and if not on top, it competed with. And I'm talking about speakers that cost thousands of dollars. So how much do these little babies cost? Well, take the 305. The 305 JBL LSR 305 can often be found for $80 a speaker. Now, it's normally like 150 or so, but I mean, it's a steal at $80 a speaker, even at 150, it's self amplified. It doesn't need an, uh, you know, an external amp. It doesn't need your receiver to power it. So you can use a mid grade receiver with pre outs and you are set. You're good to go. I often recommend the JBL 308 up front and 305s for the surrounds and rears. And it is an awesome setup. So if you're looking for a budget speaker, but you want something that's not going to make you want to upgrade it in six months, go check out the JBL 3 series. All right. Was he working out right now? Was he just getting jacked right now? Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting recommendation because those JBLs are typically used for studio monitors. But the cool thing is they are amplified. And I guess if you wanted to go that route, you could. Um, I think you have to be careful. Make sure that you're using an AVR 
that does support pre-outs. All right, so next up we have Spec of Tech. What's going on everybody? Baird here with Spec of Tech. Uh, first, I just wanna say a huge thank you to Daily Hi-Fi for allowing me to be a part of this collaboration. I think it's a great idea. Thank you so much guys for allowing me to be a part of it. All right, so secondly, I'm out of town. I'm working, so I gotta shoot in my room here. I apologize for the poor audio quality and video quality, but it is what it is. I'm doing the best with what I got. All right, so the ask is, what would I recommend to most people uh, for a home theater in two minutes? So first, to answer that question, we kind of need to establish what most people is. And in my opinion, that's your average consumer with a kind of middle of the road budget, not too big, not too small. Any home theater, you need yourself a big screen, of course. So I'm going with the uh, Sony 900F 85 inch uh, TV. It's 4K, it's HDR, uh, it's full array local dimming. So great all around performance, great all around picture. With a big screen, you need big sound. So I'm going with the Klipsch RP series speaker. So a five speaker setup. Um, it's going to be a brand the consumer is going to trust, great all around performance for the price, and in my opinion, they look great. Um, and with big screen and big sound, you definitely need big bass. I'm going to recommend the uh, Super Search VTF 15H MK2s, uh, two of those subwoofers. It's going to give you a great taste of subsonic bass, great mid bass. It's just an all around great bang for your buck, especially to those in the US. And for your media consumption, I'm going to recommend the Xbox One X. Recently, they've been going on sale for a great price. Um, it's an admirable 4K player. Not the best, but admirable one. Uh, you can download all kinds of streaming apps for your streaming services. You can even play games if you want. And it does do Atmos. To power everything, I'm going with the uh, Marantz 6014 AVR. Great all-around AVR. Uh, great features. Great sound quality. And if you ever did want to go Atmos, it does process 11 channels. All right, guys. That pretty much sums it up. Pretty basic system, but great sound and great picture for the average consumer. Thanks again to the Daily Hi-Fi for this collaboration and letting, allowing me to be a part of it. And as always, stay techy. Awesome job, Barrett. So thank you for that. Yeah, so RP600 series, RP uh, line, you can't go wrong with that. Two Sue uh, subs, man, that thing's going to bump. Awesome. Next, we have the Villa Man. Let's see what he has to say. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here. And if I were to recommend a high performance system for most people which doesn't break the bank, it would be the Klipsch Reference Premier Line. Specifically, the RP8000F Towers are the RP600M bookshelf speakers. Now, Klipsch are very popular speakers and for good reason, but I reviewed these speakers when they first came out and I absolutely loved them. They have a lot of output and great dynamics. I would pair that with the RP504C center channel speakers so you'd have the towers up front and in the back, the bookshelves as your surrounds. Now, right now, you can get all those speakers for under $2,100, which is a fantastic deal. And if you don't have a sub or receiver already then i'd recommend the monolith 12 thx sub because that has some great output and also the denon x3500h receiver it was recently replaced by the x3600h but it has most of the same features for half the price now that's an absolutely killer system for under 3200 dollars and if you don't need all the output that the towers would give you then you can always use four of the bookshelves and shave an extra 500 dollars off that total price tag then all that's left to do is sit back and enjoy and the villain man's got that bassy voice. Make sure you got a sub if you want to be able to hear the low tones. Another vote for the Klipsch RP600 series. Next up is Average Guy Hi-Fi. Hello everyone, Dustin here, Average Guy Hi-Fi. So since I primarily focus on helping the beginners in the secondhand market um, for home audio, my take's probably going to be a little bit different. Um, what home theater do I recommend for most people out there? First, you got to start off with what your budget is. I would establish that first. Number two would be figure out how big of the room that you're trying to fill. That's uh, very important when it comes to home audio systems. Um, can you get away with big speakers or do you have to do small speakers? Good news is you can get good sound either way. Um, number three is keep an open mind. Um, you can get real caught up in these forums. People just regurgitate the same thing over and over again. The speakers that they own are the, the best speakers out there. But you know, with my previous experience owning hundreds of pairs of speakers, you know, there's different sound characteristics for sure, but it's very rarely where I'll take a good set of speakers, unplug it, plug another set of good speakers in there, and the one of them sounds like trash. That's not really the case. So keep an open mind when it comes to what brands you are um, you like. But the main thing is to get out into the stores, go listen to them for yourself, because there are brands that have a little bit brighter, a uh, little bit brighter on top. There's brands out there that don't have as much bass. So figure out what you like the sound of, and then that will really help educate you um, for purchases to make down the road. Another thing to consider too is also focus on um, 
if you don't want to go in there and spend a whole ton of money and you're not sure you're really going to get into this thing, maybe start off on the used uh, audio market. You can actually buy speakers um, if you get good deals on them, bring them home, sample them for a couple weeks. If you don't like the sound of them, sell them for what you're paid for it. All you're out is the time to go get them and the gas to go get them. And then keep it on. So I've been doing that for 20 years. I don't recommend that because it turns into a bit of an obsession. But just keep an open mind. Be flexible here. If you read the reviews, they're going to tell you there's only one way to do it. And trust me, that is not my, um, that's not my experience in this hobby. So just have fun with it. But I noticed he has some RP600Ms in the background too. Man, Klipsch, what's up? I also see a Sunfire Trusa buffer back there. I've always wanted one of those. Let me know how that is. Next up is Michael Youthman Stevens, my fellow Daily Hi-Fi colleague. Let's see what you got, Michael. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Youth Man. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite home theater setup. Now, if you've watched my channel, you know I love clips. I've owned over 50 pair of clip speakers from the reference series all the way up to the Heritage series. Really have always enjoyed that horn sound. And so you may be wondering, Michael, what clip system are you going to be recommending in this video? The reality is I'm not. I actually was put in touch with a new company uh, to me um, that a lot of my fans, a lot of my subscribers had recommended I check out. They said, if you like my SVS PB16 Ultras, you got to check out this company, JTR. So JTR sent me a pair of their Captivator RS2 subwoofers, dual 18 inch subwoofers in a sealed enclosure with a 4,000 watt each amp. And so there's two of those now in my system sold my PB16s, upgraded to the RS2s, absolutely phenomenal. I get flat down to about 10 hertz, unreal. Absolutely love it, really tight bass, and I don't get the port chuffing that I got with my previous PB16s. The other thing is I had an opportunity to fly up to Wisconsin to visit JTR headquarters. I actually did a video on my channel, as well as two other JTR home theaters, and one of those JTR theaters, guys, I have never heard a home theater that sounded as amazing as Tony's uh, system. He's got a complete JTR system, big, massive JTR towers, big honking JTR subwoofers, absolutely incredible. Um, they have the same kind of signature qualities as clips with the horn loaded driver, um, with the clarity, the detail, the dynamics that I love in clips but man, they just take it to a whole new level. So if you haven't checked out JTR, I encourage you to do so. I'll leave some links down in the description below. Hope you guys are blessed and we'll catch you in the next video. <laughs> Bro, did you just recommend JTR speakers for most people? Those are huge. I get you though. Youth man, you're a little bit on the extreme side, which I love and that's why, that's why we watch. But yeah, I thought we were going to get another clips recommendation. I was going to have to tick that button for paid advertisement in a second. But uh, next up, we have Chana, my buddy Chana, a.k.a. Techno Dad. What you got, Chana? What's up, everyone? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, trying to help you get that theater sound on a low budget for your home. One of the speaker systems I've been looking at for a while is the Clips theater pack. It's a 5.1 speaker system. So you get five ear level speakers and one subwoofer and it was a thousand dollars. Well, now it's on sale. So you can get it anywhere from 500 to $600. And if you pair that with an AV receiver, like the Denon X 3600H for $1,100, well, you've now got a 5.1 setup that you can run for about 1600 bucks. Now here's the cool part that Denon can actually process and power nine channels. So if you were to get two of those theater packs, now we're talking about $1,000 in speakers, you can have 5.2.4. That's five ear level speakers, two subwoofers, and four high channels. So you have two front height and two rear height, full on Dolby Atmos setup for about $21 to $2,200. Of course, not including cables and mounts, you're gonna need those. And in my link, I definitely put all that stuff in there for you guys to get set up with an awesome sounding Dolby Atmos setup that's going to rival your theater. And the best part is, it's in your home. And if you wanna pair that up with a good looking OLED from last year, $1,500 for a 55 inch. So that brings you up to $3,500 or for $2,100, you get the 65 inch. So for around 43 to $4,400, you are set up with a 5.2.4 Dolby Atmos setup with an AV receiver and a 65 inch OLED. 
that's the way to go. Now I couldn't find any X3600Hs available on Amazon. So I do also recommend the older model. That's one step above. It's the X4400H. Definitely check it out at my link. Oh yeah, big shout out to Joe Intel for doing this. Great idea, buddy. Peace. Thank you, sir. My dudes over here at Daily Hi-Fi have some pretty crispy video and audio, huh? Awesome job. An interesting recommendation too with the, the theater packs. Very interesting. Next up, we have Shane, AKA Spare Change. Let's see what he has to say. What's up guys, Shane from Spare Change here. So my top picks for home theater components is gonna start with the processor. The best, unquestionably, is gonna be a Trinel of Altitude, either 16 or 32. To power it, I'm gonna pick my personal favorites, Rotel amplifiers. If you wanna save a little extra money, extra little spare change, then you can start off with some Emotivas. To play your movies, the best 4K Blu-ray player is gonna be the Panasonic UB9000. If you're all about that streaming life and don't wanna collect physical media, then my top pick is gonna be the Apple TV. Now, if you wanna watch all this stuff, you're gonna to have to play back on something, and if you don't have the space, then I say go with a Sony or LG OLED television. If you do have the space and want to get the most immersive experience, then you're going to have to go with a projector, either JVC, NX5, NX7, or NX9. Now, those are my picks for the best home theater components. Yo, <laughs> whoa, what's, what's going on? Oh my, I can't believe you did that, bro. I can't believe you did that. We were just joking around saying he should do the thing like the news guy. And there you go. There you go. For, for all you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Look at the look at the smile on his face right here. Now those are my picks for the best home theater components. Look at the, you know what you did. Oh, I can't. All right, I guess well that just leaves me. So I just want to let you guys know that I am gonna leave a link to all of the recommendations down in the description and links to everyone's channels. So I have a few options. I'm gonna have to go with a budget pick. I'm gonna start with the speakers. I'm gonna say. If you want to try some of the Mica 000 speakers, they're MTM, which means they're mid-range, tweeter mid-range. Just get a bunch of those. They're $99 for a pair. And they're small speakers. But the thing is that when you pair it up with an AVR that can cross over those speakers at 80 hertz, you know what? Speakers can get pretty loud if you're not letting them play super low bass notes. So you might be surprised how loud these small speakers actually can get. So you can get a bunch of those. They're going to be perfectly matched. You can turn it to the side for a center channel, vertically, however you want to do it. You can use them for rears if you want to add some more for your surrounds and, and height if you wanted to. They have mounts on the back, so they're a good option for that, and I think they sound really good. Now, another option might be these Yamo S803, the home theater pack here, and they go on sale right now. They're $199 for the entire kit. That is just, that's insane. That's crazy. They look great, and I would easily recommend any of those. Now, you would need to pair that up with an app, and I would say, you know what, don't spend too much. Go with something like the Denon AVR S750H. It's Dolby Atmos, has 4K HDR, eARC, you can stream to it, and right now it's selling for 499 bucks. You're, that's crazy. HD, all the stuff that this thing can do with Odyssey and being able to use the app with it, that's an insane, insane price. You can't beat that. Now, last, you're gonna need some subs. I think the sub is really what makes it that home theater experience. And I'm gonna have to go with the SVS PB2000 subwoofer. It's 699 at the moment. It goes down to 17 hertz. My recommendation is you need a sub that goes below or at least 20 hertz, and this gets down to 17. If you want the sealed one, you can go with the SB2000. Awesome deals. For me, I'm a projector guy. I feel like that rounds out the whole audio video experience. So my recommendation would be something like the BenQ HT2050A. It's a 1080p projector. I have a 4K one and it's hard to tell a difference a lot of times. And uh, so I would say something like that and maybe an inexpensive screen like the Silver Ticket. You know, you'll have a great movie theater experience. And that's it. So anyway, what do you guys think? What is your recommendation? Leave them in the comments below. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos, and I'll see you at the Hi-Fi Summit. Hey guys, Kyle from Life of Bliss. I almost didn't make the cut for this video because we had a new addition to the family that decided to come a few days early and spend a few days in the hospital, but she is home and healthy now, so 
thankful for that and I'm glad Joe was able to squeeze me in at the last minute. So my complete system suggestions may be a little different from some of the other guys on this video. I really enjoy the DIY side of home theater, not only because I enjoy the building process, but I think you can get a really great sounding setup on a budget as long as you have a little bit of tools and some time. First, if you're using a projector, one great way to save money is building your own screen with the materials from Carl's Place. This screen behind me here is made from their flexi gray material and is a 120 inch screen that I made for roughly $200 even after adding all of the LEDs for backlighting. Carl's Place offers many different materials including some ALR and acoustic transparent materials to best fit your area. Now for your system speakers, there are several kits out there offered by places like Parts Express or DIY Sound Group. You can go as conservative or as crazy as you'd like building a set of overnight sensations that have 4 inch woofers and are a small bookshelf speaker up to something like the 1299s from DIY Sound Group which have dual 12 inch woofers and stand over 4 feet tall. All of these kits have been tested to ensure sound quality if built properly, taking the guesswork out for you and offering a great value for the quality of speaker that you'll be getting. Now onto my favorite part of DIY home theater, DIY subs. There are a ton of options out there for DIY subwoofers with the most popular probably being the Dayton Altimax driver. Parts Express offers a kit for the 18 inch Altimax driver that includes the complete enclosure and a 1200 watt plate amp for only $900. And if that's not enough for you, Stereo Integrity offers a 24 inch subwoofer that is guaranteed to satisfy almost any bass head. So I hope that gave you guys a good insight to the DIY side of home theater and the value that it can bring. Whether you do DIY or not, just be sure to have fun building up your home theater and enjoy it as much as possible like we do down here. And if you're interested in any of these projects that I have done behind me, you can find those on my YouTube channel, Life of Bliss. Yeah. Oh, I know, we're almost done. I hope you all are doing well and good luck with your home theater projects. Oh.